Okay, guys. Yeah, guys, uh, I guess David Wood's going live now, but he's going to be talking about an unrelated topic. His topic will be on. Paul, you need to leave, brother. Uh, guys, block Paul. I want him to go to David Wood. Please block this guy for the division he started. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, guys. Our brother David Wood is doing a live stream. He, but it's going to be on the Kalam cosmological argument, one of the proofs used by William Lane Craig and others for God's existence. So if you guys are interested in some of the proofs Christian philosophers and apologists <clears throat> employ to demonstrate that God exists, go listen to David Wood because he's got – what's his what's his full name? Braxton is his last name? I forget his name. Anyway. Yes, I forget his name. What's that brother's name? Can it, someone tell me? Not Tony Braxton. That's it. Braxton Hunter. Yeah, Braxton, Braxton Hunter. Braxton Hunter is a top-notch Christian apologist against atheism. He's got a YouTube channel, excellent YouTube channel, refuting atheists. And you know that David Wood used to be an atheist who's now a follower of Jesus Christ. So I didn't know he's going live because I don't like to go live when other Christians are live. But since this topic is not related to what I'm going to talk about, that means those who want to listen to Christian, Muslim <clears throat> topics, issues related to Christianity and Islam, then I'm just going to keep trucking. So you have a choice. If you want to go there, learn arguments to refute atheists. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Braxton Hunter is fantastic. Even David Wood is fantastic. They are top-notch in refuting atheism, showing that it's irrational. And that the God of the Bible exists. So if you want to learn, go. Go there and support the brethren. But if you're more interested in learning how to use the words of Muhammad from the Quran and Hadith to prove that Jesus is God, then stick around because I'm going to kill several birds with one stone. Several birds with one stone. Not only will I show what Muhammad said that points to Jesus being God, we're going to go into the Bible, the word of God. The Holy Bible is God's word, not the Quran, not the statements of Muhammad. So you're not only going to learn how to refute Islam, but you're going to learn a little more about your own faith, about your own scriptures, and how to interpret them correctly by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, sorry. The reason why I got Paul Bishop out of here because he started trouble by mentioning David Wood. You know, it's hard to choose between two good individuals, so I helped him make the choice. See, guys, I'm fair. I help I help them make the choice. Get out of here. Don't come. Go to David Wood. Right? You're coming here and starting trouble. Anyway. So I help them make the choice. I mean, because as thou shalt not pontificate, stated, why mention it? Okay, you chose to come here. Leave it be. So don't come back. Okay, brethren? All right, now. Yeah, I am Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, I am Sheikh Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In Jesus Almighty name, in Jesus Almighty name. Yeah, listen, guys, it's gonna buffer. You know how it is. My modem warms up, but it's ninety nine percent better than it used to be. So I'm in a different location area in my apartment. Hopefully, this will be a little better. A change of scenery. The windows here, and the door is here. Remember what this door represents. The door represents <clears throat> how to enter into heaven and be in the presence of God forever. Jesus Christ, our Lord, right? He is the spiritual door and the only door that gives us access into God's heavenly presence. Because our Lord Jesus Christ said he is the door of the sheep. John 10 verses 1 to 10. And he says in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So may the Lord Jesus be glorified. I'm just waiting a few more minutes for some of the regulars to show up. I start a little later than normal, but that's okay. And I'm a little tired under the weather. Hopefully it's not coronavirus. Pray for my older brother, my older brother, Sal, your pal. He finally made it. He's now here with me. And so now he's my roommate. I got this apartment for him and I. So pray the Lord Jesus will bless us. The Lord Jesus will provide for us. The Lord Jesus will transform us. To just trust in Jesus, love Jesus, live for Jesus, serve Jesus, our Lord. And he's kind of little under the weather. He's 
I don't know. He thinks he's got heat stroke, not heat stroke. What do they call it? When you're out in the sun, yeah, heat stroke, right? So pray for him. He's kind of sick and out. Pray in Jesus' name that if the Lord is pleased to keep us healthy, but his will be done. You know, the Lord hasn't said you won't get sick. But he has promised that even if you get sick, he'll give you the grace and mercy to endure. And if that's his way of bringing you into his presence, he'll give you the power to go through it, where then you'll be completely alive, pain-free, no more death, no more pain, no more misery, no more sin, no more struggles, no more division. But dwelling in the presence of Jesus Christ, being filled with his infinite love, joy, and peace forever and ever. And I feel a little under the weather myself, but the Lord Jesus is my healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is my healer. He is my health insurance. His will be done, whatever he wants. If he wants me to be healthy, praise his name. If he wants me to get coronavirus, praise his name. I will glorify him by the power of the Holy Spirit, and you glorify him by the power of the Holy Spirit, whether you get coronavirus or not, cancer or not, he is worthy to be praised because the Lord Jesus has stated that we have to die until Jesus returns, and then he will raise our physical bodies and make them incorruptible, immortal, where our physical bodies will no longer decay, no more suffer pain, no longer suffer pain or die because he'll eradicate the curse that has come upon creation because of the sin of Adam and Eve. Right? So just let you know. So by his grace and mercy in Jesus' almighty name, hopefully this is good. You know, I had to rush to get this. Lindsay, how are you, sister? Others around you, how are you? God bless you guys. Father, we ask that you bless this session and bless also David Wood's session. Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Bless Braxton Hunter's discussion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, anoint him to present these proofs that you have given to silence skeptics who seek to deny your existence to their shame and destruction because you are existence. You are life. You are reality. Without you, we would not even be here to argue whether you exist or not. So bless that session, Father. Use that session to strengthen the faith of believers that you are God. The Lord Jesus is alive. He's risen. The Spirit lives in us, and the Bible is God's word. And use them to bring atheists out of the darkness of atheism, the futility and foolishness of atheism, and to the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, use me in this session, Father. I ask, Lord, that you fill me and everyone here with the breath of life, your Holy Spirit. Grant me the health I need to do this for as long as you want me to do this, Father. Fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life. Anoint my words, Father. Purify my heart. Purify my my spirit, purify my entire being and the motives of my heart and the blood of the Lord Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, and destroy all distractions of the enemy. And Father, anoint me to speak truth without error, to recall all these facts and passages and interpret them correctly, Father. Please, for the glory of Jesus. And I pray that you use these sessions. Use me, my YouTube channel, to strengthen the body of believers, the household of the living God, the church of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> use us, Father, by the power of your spirit, to fall more in love with Jesus, to trust completely in Jesus, to be transformed, to conform to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, to act like Jesus did when he was on earth, to pray the way Jesus prayed when he was on earth, to serve and love by our actions and deeds by the power of the Holy Spirit as Jesus did on earth, setting an example for us, and that our hearts will be the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Yahovah Rapha, wash us in the blood of the Lamb. By his stripes we are whole. We are healed, the blood of Jesus. And I pray that for my loved one's father, my, my daughters, and everyone else's loved one's father. And take over this session. Rejuvenate us. Replenish us. Revive us. Reinvigorate us. And destroy the distractions of Satan and his children. And save us from our own sinful passions, Father. Not just to hear your word, but to be transformed by hearing your word and live your word for the glory of Jesus, the Son of the Most High. Be with us, Father. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Be with us, Holy Spirit, and our loved ones. In my case, be with my daughters. Flood them. Flood our loved ones. Flood us in your living waters, Father. In your living waters, Lord Jesus. Flood us in your presence, Holy Spirit, and purify us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. And be with us, Lord. Be with us, and Lord. Grant me clarity of thought and speech and save me from error to bless them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the Father, the Spirit.
Okay, guys, welcome. <clears throat> Don't let the title turn you off. Even though it's Muhammad proves Jesus is God, you're going to learn a lot. Yeah, he's got what they call sunstroke. He's out. So pray for him, Sal. And pray God will bless him and I to work together. Pray that the Lord Jesus will seal us together. <clears throat> bless the, the work of our hands to be able just to stay on our feet and to provide our daily bread. And I can continue to provide for my daughters and that the Lord Jesus will bring them to me. So pray for us. He just got here. It's been a couple of days. And it's kind of rough. But God is good. Father, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I was going to mention something because he mentioned Sal and I forgot. Yeah. You mentioned Sal, DJ next, my brother, and you just discombobulated me. I was going to mention something, hopefully, by the grace and mercy of Lord Jesus Christ. I trust the Holy Spirit to make the sound of my voice pleasing to your ears and enable me to <clears throat> do justice to this topic. Yeah, this is what I was saying. Don't let the title Muhammad prove Jesus is God. Turn you off because I know that a lot of Christians don't, won't come to my session if it's on Islam, and a lot of others will. I use the teachings of Muhammad to bring us back to the Holy Bible. My goal in all my sessions is to be used of the Spirit to help us understand the Bible because the Holy Bible is the only revelation of God written down. It is the only inspired inscripturation of God's perfect words. It is the only voice of God to the bride of Christ, the Lord Jesus, and so my goal is to be used by the Holy Spirit, to be used by the Holy Spirit, to help us dig deeper into the scriptures as the Holy Spirit gives us illumination to understand the depth of scriptures and then live the scriptures by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus, live them out for the glory of Jesus. So that's my goal. So everything I do will have the goal of bringing us back to the scriptures to understand the scriptures and live them out for the glory of Jesus Christ. So I know a lot of people just want to hear about Islam. Other people don't want to hear about Islam. What I want to do is use Islam to bring glory to Jesus Christ and to see Muslims get saved, but primarily see Christians be strengthened in their faith and inoculated so they don't fall away from the beauty of Jesus Christ and the beauty of his word for a false prophet and a false book. All right? Thank you. I love you guys in India too. So is that clear? All right, guys, focus, please. Focus and pray and invite your friends. God blessed, blessed us. We're, we're now getting close to about 190 people. Hopefully we'll, we'll go past the 200 mark and keep them in Jesus' name. All right. Are we ready? Because before I get, begin, I got a series of articles to give you. Uh, Jesus Christ is the Lord. In time, I want to do all of that. He just asked me a question. Why don't I do short vi videos? Because that's how David Wood took off. David Wood, for the past 10 years, has been doing short videos that God has blessed and caused his YouTube channel to take off. He's got about close to half a million. And he's been doing it for over 10 years. I need the time and I need the education. I am not technically savvy. I really need to be planted with no distractions and attacks of Satan, where I spend time learning to how to... Do short videos because it takes editing. But glory to God, we have some outstanding brothers, Protestant believer, and the other mods. All these videos that you've been you've been seeing in the past week that have been downloaded to my YouTube channel is because of Protestant believer. He is a tech whiz, so he's found my lectures on other YouTube channels, and he's now downloaded them to my YouTube channel, and he doesn't get get paid for doing this. He does it free out of his love for Jesus Christ because he believes that the Lord is blessing me for this work and he wants to come alongside me and serve me for the sake of Jesus. So Protestant believers doing it, doesn't get paid for it, and he, he works a full-time job and has family. Thank you, Rebel Mark. So in the meantime, as I learned the ropes, he's helping me. He's helping me to help you. And he's gathering all my lectures and putting them on one page. So all those sessions... All these new videos were lectures I did on Pal Talk that were recorded and placed on various YouTube channels. Now he's gathering them all on my YouTube channel. So praise God for such faithful brothers and sisters who do this for their love for Jesus because they don't get paid. I, I can't afford it. Folks, I'm in full-time ministry. And unless you are part of a big organization like Ravi Zacharias International, don't expect to be rich financially. 
because you're storing up riches in heaven that are indestructible. Glory to Jesus. He provides my daily bread. And I trust that he will provide abundantly for my daughters. So if he's waiting for me to pay him, good luck. Me and him will both be homeless. We'll be having a sign. Christian apologists who apologize for not making enough money to stay in ministry. Can you feed us? Right? That's what we're going to do. Are we ready now? Before I go, hold on a second. I have a series of articles that you need to now click on the links and save them. Okay. These are the articles that contain all the information that you're going to hear. So are you ready? And thank the mods because then they take my articles and they put them in the description box so you can click on them. So are you ready? I got a lot of articles. God bless you, Sister Magdalene. Lord bless you. Thank you for joining. Invite people. Are you guys ready? I got a lot of articles. Are you ready now to click and save? Because these articles, you need to save them and use them for future reference because all this information is in these articles, the citations from the Quran, from the Hadith, biblical citations. So are you ready? There are a lot. Good. God bless you, Louisa. Good to see you, sister. I especially enjoy when the newbies come, that God is using me in their life. Glory to the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay, here, let's go. Okay, let's start. All right. There's too many. I'm going to even forget. Pray for me because the heat kind of got, got me dizzy. God bless you, Kevin Drake. Lord, watch over you. Okay, you ready? First article. And guys, you got to be on my social pages. You got to be on my Facebook pages because in Facebook, I'm constantly posting links to articles. I just posted several articles on my Facebook page. Okay, that's one. Did you get that one? Did you get that article? That's one. Here is part two of that, okay? We're going to have fun today. Oh, boy, are we going to have fun. I'm going to use the words of Muhammad to prove that Jesus Christ is Lord, God in the flesh. Muhammad's own words, okay? I know Muslims are going to be happy with that. That's two. There you go. That's two. Okay. Are you ready now for the third one? The third one. All right. Okay, did you save those two? This is article three. Thank the Lord Jesus, praise our triune God, praise the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that in his love and mercy, he has raised up teachers and put a fire in their hearts to spend time studying, researching, and then collating the arguments and publishing articles or sessions for his glory, for the building up of his church. Because after all, if Jesus didn't put this passion in our hearts, we wouldn't do it. If the Lord didn't put a fire in my heart to do this, I wouldn't be here. So that was two. Now, this is now Article 3, right? Count with me because I'm brain dead. Is that the third article? You don't need to download. Just click on the link, 2 Corinthians 10. Click on the links and just keep the windows open. And then later you can save the page. It's not so much downloading them, right? That's the third one. All right, so you got three? All right. Still not done. Boy, I'm tired for you. Whew. I'm tired for you guys, man. Hold on, let's see. Sorry about that. Oops, I went to the wrong one. Hold on. All right. Did I give you this yet? Let me just let's make sure I'm not confusing myself. Man, I'm even confused. Okay, that's three. There should be another one. I think I gave you everything I needed to give you. Let me see. So I'm telling you, I'm so fried, I don't even know anymore. All right, let's go here. Let's do this. Brutus. Hold on, guys. Sorry. That's because I want to give you articles to go with this stuff. So that you can use it to glorify the triune God. Yahovah Father Spirit. Glorify the Father, his eternal son, his word, and his eternal spirit. Father, Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry for the noise. That's what it is. Okay, let's see. I think that was it. I think, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay, I think it's only three. I thought it was more than three, but hey, folks. Hey there, brother. Da, da, da. Let's see. Okay, folks. Let me just sing to keep you doing. Only the lonely. Okay, here you go. Here's two more, just for good measure. Boom, 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 yeah. 
Oh, okay, save that one too. Only the lonely, only the only the lonely. No, I cry, I cry inside. Only the lonely. There goes my baby. Ba 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 ba. There goes my ha romance. All right, here you go. At least you get singing as you wait, right? I don't want you to get bored waiting. Okay, that's another one. Here you go. And this, I'll make this the final one for today. I'll make this the final one. Lonely, the lonely, only the lonely. Notice, is it weird? Have you noticed the kind of songs I sing? The kind of song I sing are the kind that make you cry. Only the lonely, no, I cry, I cry inside. Only you. Okay, let me get there. Now let me get it. There goes my baby. All right. Ba, 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 ba. There goes my heart. Da, 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 da. A new romance. Okay, we're ready. Are we ready now? Yeah. Got it. If your lonely heart breaks, only the lonely, only the lonely. Okay, let me sing one more song so we can get in the mood. I'll take good care of my baby. Be just as kind as you can be. And if you should discover that you don't really love her, send my baby back home to me. Come on, ladies. How'd you rate my singing, ladies? Especially the single ladies. How would you rate my singing? Can you imagine having me sing all day, all night, married to me and me singing at you? Say, here I look at you. I'm all out of love. I'm living without you. Okay, there. Right, ready? That's Elvis, if you don't know. <clears throat> yeah, baby. Yeah, okay. With that said, Let's begin. How does Muhammad prove that Jesus is God? Now, let me explain what I don't mean. I'm not saying Muhammad came out. Muhammad just came out and said Jesus is God. Obviously, he didn't do that, right? Muhammad didn't do that. Muhammad didn't come out and say Jesus is God. In fact, Muhammad taught contradictory things about Jesus in the Quran. In one breath, he wants to say Jesus is just the human servant of God. But then he says things about Jesus that show that Jesus is more than a man. He's God in the flesh. Now, related to that point, let me explain how Muhammad ends up proving that Jesus claimed to be God. Muhammad said certain things about his God, which Jesus ascribes to himself. In other words, Muhammad says, God is like this. God does this. And then we find Jesus saying, he's like that, and he does that, so that Muhammad provides implicit. In other words, not direct. It doesn't say, oh, Jesus is God. What Muhammad says about deity shows that the things that Jesus says and does, Jesus must be God in the flesh. You understand what I'm trying to prove here? So I'm going to bring you back to the Bible, God's word, right? I'm going to bring you back to the Bible, God's word. Hold on one second. All right, let's see this. All right. God's word. And I'm going to show you how. What Muhammad says about his God demonstrates Jesus' claim to be God. So are you ready now? Let's just give you one of many. We're going to start now. Let's go to the Quran first. And thank first last, we'll be posting Quranic verses. Chapter 22 of the Quran, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. Watch here. That is because Allah, he is the truth. And because he quickeneth the dead. That's old English way of saying he gives life to the dead. That is because Allah, he is the truth. And because he quickeneth the dead, he gives life to the, de to the dead. And because he is able to do all things. And because the hour will come. The hour will come. Guys, pay attention now. The hour will come. There is no doubt thereof. And because Allah will raise those who are in the graves. So notice what Muhammad said about his God. Allah is the truth. al haq he quickeneth the dead. He gives life to the dead. The hour will come, meaning the last day will come, and Allah will then raise the dead from their graves, right? Right? 
Did you see what he just claimed? I got to get in the gym, man. I got to get my shoulders pumped. Do you see what he just claimed about his, his deity? Allah is the truth, Al-Haq. Allah quickens the, de quickeneth the dead, quickens the dead, gives light to the dead. The hour, the last day, Allah will raise them from their graves. Okay, let's go to John 5, verse 21. Here's where I need your attention. Pay attention because it's going to do several things. It's going to show you how Muhammad ended up indirectly testifying that Jesus claimed to be God. And then it's going to show you how amazing the Bible is and how clear the Bible is that Jesus is not the Father. He's not the Spirit, but he's God Almighty in the flesh to blow you away that even a blind man can see that the Bible teaches the Trinity. Even a blind man who's honest will see the Bible teaches the Trinity. Okay, watch. John 5, 22, 21. He just posted it. Thank Protestant, our brother, for it. For just as the Father raises the dead up and makes them alive, so the Son also makes alive whomever he wants. Okay? So who makes the dead alive? Who gives life to the dead? The son with the father. So notice they're not the same person. The father is not the son. The son is not the father. But like the father, like the father, the son gives life, raises the dead. Now, Protestant, because at certain times of the night, his Alzheimer's kicks in. I think he's quoting the New World Translation of those witnesses. When he can go back to the King James Bible. Remember, he's our brother. We love him, so we got to be patient with him. We got to be patient with our elderly. One thing you're learning about the coronavirus, be kind to the elderly. So we need to be kind to Protestant. Because he's quoting the Jehovah Witness Bible, though. <laughs> it's not a problem. I love this guy, man. I, I thank God he's saved because we're going to spend everlasting life together. I'm going to have to... Get used to him because I'm going to be with him forever. But the good thing is in heaven, he won't be forgetting. God bless you, Juan. In heaven, it ain't going to be like, hey, uh, Protestant, can you quote John 5, 21? And then he quotes me the Book of Mormon. Because when we're in glory, Alzheimer's will be destroyed. Forgetting will be destroyed. We'll be perfect. Right? In fact, I'm on, side note, real quickly, I'm going to share something with you. I saw this, brother. I got to tell you, the guy's a handsome man. I haven't told him this. When I saw him, I said, man, what a handsome man. What's up, Cabello? I said, a handsome, he is. And I think he's older than me anyway. He kind of looked like one of these country singers, like a combination of Kenny Rogers and Willie Nelson, right? Handsome guy too, right? And if I recall, you were wearing glasses, weren't you? Right? And so when I saw him, you know what I started thinking? He actually looks, I said, man, this guy looks like a cartoon character. Honestly. And what he reminded me of, I never told him this. He reminded me of that cartoon in Tom and Jerry, where Jerry had that uh, uncle, that, that mouse with the big whiskers and a big, big like, 10-gallon cowboy hat. And he goes, howdy, nephew, hey, hoarding heat and heat around the Remember that cartoon? Do you guys remember that cartoon? You guys know I grew up on Tom and Jerry, Woody Woodpecker, right? Tom and Jerry, Woody Woodpecker, Captain Caveman. You remember that? So every time I think of Protestant's face, I think of Jerry's uncle. Howdy, nephew. Hey! And then he would go and he'd pull out the whisker of Tom because he'd break his guitar. Here, k -k 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 -k. now dog art, you know, I need a whisker. Oh, hold him, hit him, hit him. All right. Now, with that said, let's come back to John 5, right? A.D., L.D., that was our favorite cartoon. John 5, 21. Crumble! All right, John 5, 21. Let's start it again. You ain't lying, Louisa. Okay, for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. So notice, guys, for those of you who want to go deep in the Bible, the Lord affirmed two important theological Facts, truths. Number one, he's not the father. The son is not the father. So much for modalism. But number two, the son can do everything the father does because the son is equal to the father in essence and therefore one God with him. So you see the two facts that you're learning from John 5, 21? I am not the father, but just as the father gives life and raises the dead, so too the son gives life to whom he wants. So the son is not the father, but he is equal to the father 
He's just as powerful as the Father and can do what the Father does. And yet the Father is God, and the Father does things that only God can do. The Father does things that only God can do. Only God raises the dead and gives them life. And Jesus says, I, the Son, do the same thing in union with the Father. Right? You with me there? And now, remember what Allah said? Allah in the Quran says, he quickeneth the dead. Chapter 22, verse 6 to 7, Allah said, he quickeneth the dead, and he is the truth, and at the hour he will raise them from their graves. Now let's go to John 5, 25. John 5, 25. I'm going to use Muhammad's words about his God to show Jesus' claim to be God. Okay? So you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn how to refute Islam and prove that Jesus is God and the Trinity is true. So you're going to learn all this. Go to John 5, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus is the, the son speaking, Jesus speaking. The hour is coming. Wow. The hour is coming. Hmm. We just read that in the Quran. And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Oh, my goodness. Jesus, you're saying that when the hour comes, you, the Son, will raise them here spiritually by the power of your voice? But now let's look at John 5, 28 to 29. John 5, 28 to 29. John 5, 28 to 29. Yep, watch here. Pedro's going to get even more astonishing. If you haven't heard this before, most of these guys have heard this because I've discussed this in the past. Marvel not, Jesus speaking, marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. If you go back to 25, that's the voice of the Son of God. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Did you guys catch it? Jesus says, don't be astonished. Don't, don't be amazed at the things you're seeing now because I'm telling you, I'm going to do something even more amazing. You're going to see at the hour, the Son of God, me, raise the dead physically out of their graves by the power of my voice. Who do you think you are, Jesus? What kind of power does your voice have that at the sound of your voice, the dead raise physically. You reconstruct and recreate them in a nanosecond just by your voice. What power must you possess, Son of God, to claim that? Okay? But notice what our Lord says about himself elsewhere. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Watch here. John 14, verse 6. Watch what's going to happen here. We're going to have fun today glorifying the Trinity, glorifying Jesus. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, now, we're going to do this real quickly again. Do me a favor, Protestant. Let me write it out, and then first last, you jump in. You put in John 5, 21, 25. And then 14, verse 6, back to back. And then you, first to last, followed up with chapter 22, verses 6 to 7 of the Quran. Pay attention here. Okay. Guys, read. We're going to put them back to back. Pay attention. So you can see with your own eyes, Muhammad took the words of Jesus and put it in the mouth of his God, showing that Jesus did claim to be God. Now watch. Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7 of the Quran. Okay, now... Notice again, 520, let's read. For just as the Father raises the dead up and makes them up. He did it again. Oh, boy. We got to be kind to our elderly. Okay, anyway. Just as the Father raises the dead up and makes them alive, so also the Son makes alive whomever he wants. Verily, verily, I send to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This guy just like discombobulated me. He quoted the Jehovah's Witness Bible again. But for those of you who didn't get discombobulated, have mercy on our elderly grandfather here. Notice 22, 6 to 7. This is because Allah, he is the truth, and because he quickeneth the dead, and because he is able to do all things, and because the hour will come, there is no doubt thereof, because Allah will raise those who are in the graves. Sound familiar? 
Sound familiar? Do you see what Muhammad said about Allah? Jesus said about himself? Are you reading it? I want you to see it for yourself. Look at it. That's why I'm giving you a minute. I want you to see for yourself. Do you understand what Muhammad did? He put in the mouth of Allah what Jesus said about himself. Allah said he's the truth. Jesus said I am the truth. Allah said he quickeneth the dead. Jesus says I am the son who quickens the dead with my father. Allah said the hour is coming. He will raise them from the graves. Great. Jesus said the hour is coming where the son of God will raise the dead from their graves and raise them spiritually by his voice. Can there be any doubt from the Quranic perspective that Jesus just claimed to be God even though he's not the father? Okay, but Pedro, pay attention though. Pay attention. Don't get so much fixed on Muhammad plagiarizing the words of Jesus. Pedro, focus on Muhammad just admitted that Jesus claimed to be God and the Muslims cannot say, where did Jesus claim to be God? Right here, unless your prophet is a liar. What do you mean? Your prophet said that what Jesus said, only God can say. So why are you telling me where Jesus claimed to be God? He says it all over the place. Are you catching what I'm doing here? You're learning how to refute Islam and prove that Jesus claimed to be God. And you're learning about the Bible and your faith and the Trinity. Because notice Jesus is not the father here. Just as the father, so to the son. Just as the father, so to the son. Exactly, king of kings. So then you ask the Muslim again. You ask the Muslims again. At the last day, who raises the dead? They'll say, Allah Almighty. Will there be a creature who will raise the dead? They'll say, no. So you're sure at the last day, only Allah will raise the dead? Only Allah will raise the dead? They say, yes. You just proved Jesus is God again. John 6, 39 and 40. John 6, 39 and 40. Thank you for proving Jesus is God. Because in John 6, 39 verse 40, watch. Exactly first and last. Watch. Watch what's going to happen. So don't just think it's about Islam. You're learning your faith. Look what our Lord says. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Wait. The Quran says Allah raises the dead at the last day. And Jesus says, you're the one who's going to do it as the son? And you're not the father? Absolutely. Now let's read John 6, 41 to 44. Exactly, John Doe. So are you learning now? No, Board. Board, why are you all over the place? Do you want to get blocked? Because you're here and there. And you want me to send you to Disneyland? Or do you want to listen? John 6, 41 to 44. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Pay attention. They understood Jesus is claiming to have come down personally from heaven. Because notice 42 what they say. And they said, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? They're astonished. So they understood. You actually came down from heaven? But we know your parents. You're a human being. So they thought he's more than human, and that's where they were not getting it. Now notice what our Lord says. John 6, 43, 44. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent, sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, he says it. Jesus, who do you think you are to do the thing that the Hebrew Bible and the false Quran and the false Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad, say only God can do? Even Muhammad says that's something God does. But you're saying you do it. And you're not even the father. You're the son. So if you're the son, and the father is also God, but there's only one God, is that why the church was forced to come up with the Trinity? Is that why the church was forced to come up with the doctrine of the Trinity, Lord Jesus? Because they could say you're not the father. You're his son, and you're not the spirit. Spirit's not the father. But there's only one God, 
And we know the Father is God, and the Spirit is the eternal Spirit of God, so He's not created. And you do what only God can do, but you're not the Father, and you're also man. No wonder their church came up with the doctrine of the Trinity and the two natures of Christ. They were forced to because of the Bible. You with me there? Now let's read again what our Lord says, how he's going to raise the dead. John 5, 25. How is he going to raise the dead? Watch how he's going to raise them. How is he going to do it? Watch here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So how is he going to raise the dead? Spiritually, how is he going to give them spiritual life, resurrect them spiritually, and physically from the graves? How does he do it? Exactly, Pedro. By speaking, right? Shazad said it. How is he going to do it? By his voice, right? Now, what did Jesus do on earth? He did miracles to show his power and that you can take him at his word. So no, let me. I want you to follow now. I need you to listen now. This is where you're going to get blown away. Don't get so much hooked up on Muhammad, guys. Focus on your Lord. Focus. Jesus is saying the future, the last day, I will raise the dead physically by the power of my voice. But you don't have to wait for the future. I'm going to give you the taste of the future now because I'm going to raise the dead by my voice now. So you have no doubt that I'm going to do it then. So I'm going to do a miracle now, resurrect someone dead by my voice to give you absolute certainty that when the last day comes, I will do it then. Let's go to John 11, 23 to 27. Watch. John 11, 23 to 27. Yep, exactly, Cloudy. <laughs> Jesus saith unto her, Lazarus' sister, Lazarus' sister Martha, her brother's been dead for four days. He's rotting in the grave. By the fourth day, your body starts decomposing, right? Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Say, I know at the last day he'll be raised. That's our Jewish belief from the Old Testament. But notice what our Lord says. Etch these words in your heart and your mind and never doubt them. Never, ever doubt the words of your Lord. You cannot die according to him if you believe in him. Because notice what he says. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. You don't need to wait for the resurrection. The resurrection is standing before you in the flesh. The resurrection is not a day. The resurrection is a person. And I am he. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this? Believest thou this? And then 27. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. You understand what our Lord said? Our Lord said, don't wait for the resurrection day. The resurrection is not a day. It's a person. And an experience with a person. I am the resurrection. And if you believe in me, you will never die. Now let me give you the proof. Now I'm going to give you the proof. I'm going to raise your brother by my voice. John 11, 39 to 44. John 11, 39 to 44. Watch here. Watch what our Lord's going to say. Jesus said, take ye away the stone, remove it. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, his body decomposed, for he hath been dead four days. He's been dead for four days. Then, the, then Jesus said, Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? What are you talking about? Why are you doubting? Did I not say to you, if you believed, you would see the glory of God revealed to you? Now notice what he says. I love these words. Again, proving he's not the father. That's why we're Trinitarians. Notice 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. 
And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father. So imagine, your, guys, what I want you to do right now, put yourself there. Imagine it. Because these are actual historical events. These are real life stories that actually took place. About 2,000 years ago, this happened at a location on earth. People saw a Jewish man named Jesus. Look up. Now put yourself there and imagine it. Visualize it. You're seeing this Jewish man stand in front of you. And he looks up and he says these words. <clears throat> Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. I know you always hear me. I know you always do what I ask. I know you're always in union with me. So then why are you praying, Jesus? Here's why he's praying. Right? And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So he's not saying it for himself. Father, I'm doing this to, for them to see, though I'm not the father, I am your beloved son, your very heart that you adore. And I do everything that you can do, and I do it in union with you. And you're going to back up everything I say as a witness to everyone that I have even your confirmation of who I am. So when they heard me say, I am the resurrection of life, you from heaven are amening it. He is that. Believe him. Because I back up every word he says because he's my son. So they have no doubt who I am, and they can trust in me, Father. Now watch. When he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, voice. The hour is coming where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and come out. And that was, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Did it sink in? And with a loud voice, he summoned the dead man. Lazarus, come forth, because this is the voice of your resurrection and your life. And when the voice of your resurrection and life speaks, you have no choice but come to life and stand before me. <clears throat> ah, man. I got all back tears right now. Right? I got all back tears. Now let me, let's go a little deeper. You want to go a little deeper? Exactly. Guys, honestly, after hearing his words, after reading his words, the words that he actually uttered, because he actually said these things and he actually walked this earth, because the Gospels are inspired historical accounts, accurate historical accounts on Jesus. After hearing his words, how can you be afraid of anything? Hallelujah, Pedro. See, you're going to move me, Pedro. Corona, where is your sting? How can you be afraid anymore? Right? How can you be afraid anymore? Folks, Jesus is alive. He's risen. Death cannot contain him. He's destroyed death. What's there to fear? Honestly, what's there to fear? Your Lord <clears throat> did a miracle to comfort our hearts, saying, if you believe in me, death cannot consume you. Death will be a door that you'll enter through to be with me until I raise your bodies immortal. Right? But let me let me show you something astonishing. Let me break this down. The Bible says that when the dead, those who died physically at the time of Christ. Okay, this is before Jesus' resurrection. Now, I've done a session on this. I'll do a session in the future. Okay? But I need you to pay attention here. This is where I need you to pay attention. Okay. Before Jesus was resurrected from the dead and entered heaven physically and opened up heaven so that now if you die, your spirit enters heaven. Up until that time, the spirits of believers did not enter the Father's heavenly presence where the angels dwell. They went to what we call Sheol, Hades, the abode of the dead, where you had two compartments, one for those believers who were in a state of peace and rest, Another section where unbelievers were tormented. After Jesus' resurrection and ascension, he took the spirits of believers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, from that place of peace and brought them into heaven to now dwell before his physical presence, see the Father's visible presence, and fellowship with angels. Okay? Well, I don't know if it's the center of the earth. We're not going to get into that. 
right? Everyone with me there? I've done se sessions on this. Listen to it, and I'll do a session in the future. I don't have time to unpack it now. Now, understand what that means. Understand the implication. Are you ready now? You want to get blown away how amazing Jesus is? When Lazarus died, his spirit went to the spiritual dimension called Abraham's bosom, Hades. This dimension is not part of the physical universe. It is another dimension that exists side by side by the physical universe. But I want it to sink in because I don't think you guys understand the implication. The voice of Jesus is so powerful, it penetrates dimensions. Because Lazarus' spirit had to have heard the voice of his creator from another dimension. And when he heard, come right out and enter into that other dimension. Do you see the power of Jesus? That his voice penetrates dimensions. No dimension can keep out his voice. No, it's not the third heaven. Focus, Timothy. No dimension can keep out his voice. His voice penetrates all dimensions. So when he was physically standing at a spot on earth, the voice of the Almighty Son penetrated that dimension where Lazarus was there with other believers who were there as disembodied spirits. And as he's having fellowship with Abraham, he hears the voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he left. Do you understand the majesty of your Lord? Do you understand the power of your Lord? <clears throat> I mentioned <clears throat> when Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and, La and, and Moses were there, and they heard the sound of their creator summoning Lazarus because they all heard it. Lazarus! And they knew the sound. <clears throat> and Abraham was saying, <clears throat> That's the sound of my friend. That's the sound of my friend. And you know what that meant to them? You know what that meant? Guys, you understand? If you believe the Bible now, if you believe the Bible, you know how I know Abraham knew that was the sound of his creator? Because Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. Abraham was a sheep. And so in this other in this nether realm, they heard the voice of the shepherd. <clears throat> the voice that Abraham heard when he was on earth and the Lord walked with him. And you know what? Guess what they learned? You know what they learned? If you believe the Bible now, if you believe the Bible now, you know what they heard? When Lazarus went there, guess what he announced to them? Guys, pay attention. Okay. Lazarus would have said, our God has come in the flesh. The Messiah is here. It's only a matter of time we're leaving this place. Because remember, Lazarus was with Jesus, right? What do you think he was telling them when he left this earth, this body? When his spirit went there, guess what he told them? Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, my ancestors, Moses, David, he's come. He's here. God has become flesh, and he's become your son, David. He's here. We're about to go home. Get ready. We're going home. We're going home. Right? We're going home. Can you imagine how, how, what, how they felt? Sorry, guys. I really, I try not to cry. Honestly, I can, but I can't help it sometimes. I really can. Can you imagine when Jesus died and a spirit went down there and they saw this spirit of a man coming down and he goes, Abraham, my friend. Sorry. Isaac. Because this really happened. It really happened. He went down there. It's not make-believe. Jacob, I've come.
I've come to take you home. Let's go. Let's go. Time to go home. Father is waiting. Father is waiting. Let's go home. Come with me. Right? That's if you believe the Bible, guys. If you believe the Bible, that's what happened. <clears throat> if you believe it, that's what happened. How can you not love him, right? How can you not be in love with Jesus? You know, you you can't help it. You can't help it. He's just beautiful. So that's what happened. That would have been something to see. And you know what's beautiful, folks? Let me share something with you. And you'll hear deathbed stories confirming this because it's biblical. You know when it's time for you to go home? That's what you're going to see. The dimension open, if you're a believer. The veil between heaven and earth removed. And your Lord beckoning you. Come home. Come home, son. Come home, sweet daughter. Come home to me. I'm going to mention the story. I've, I've shared this, and I'm going to share it again. Okay, I'm going to share this again. The a true story... And Al D was there. Al D was there when he heard the testimony from Jerry Colmer. Do you remember that, Al D? I had you confirm it last time. We're going to confirm it again. A true story. Okay. Al D, my partner, was there in the church. My friend, Jerry Colmer, an older, older brother in the Lord. This was years ago. He came up, a member of his church, who was a friend of his wife, a young Christian lady. Her father had just died. Her father had just died. And he was a sign painter. From the fumes, from the fumes, he got cancer and went blind. And I've shared this before. And this guy knows the daughter. He, She was there in the church and she bore witness. This is not third hand. She was a member of the church and she, kept, she confirmed this story, guys. Now watch this. No, no, no. The king of kings is not sad. You're going to start rejoicing and crying from happiness. Watch this. He had died, and she had come to church the week after, and she was happy. And people were like kind of puzzled why she was happy, and she explained to them. She goes, I know it's kind of weird, but let me tell you what happened on the day he died. Guys, pay attention now. Pay attention. This is how real Jesus is. He went blind from the fumes, right, from sign painting, and he got cancer. He goes, the day he died, his wife was there, and I believe she was there. And he was on the bed, and he went, oh, there's Peter and John. Now, remember, he's blind, but he saw Peter and John. And the, his wife said, how do you know it's Peter and John? You know what he said? He goes, believe me, when you see them, you're going to know who they are. And then something even more amazing. He looks up. He goes, there's Jesus. He's holding a sign saying, welcome home. And he died. He died. You hear, you hear what I just said? He died. No, he didn't die. His body went to the dust. His spirit left. But do you understand how humble Jesus is? you understand how humble Jesus is? The king of glory, whose sandals were not worthy to kiss, he humbled himself to hold up a sign because he was a sign painter. you understand the humbleness of our Lord? The humbleness of our Lord. To make his transition easy, he was a sign painter, and he held up a sign. Welcome home. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Right? So that's Jesus. That's our Lord. Now, so what did Jesus do on earth? He performed a physical miracle. He raised Lazarus by his voice to show, you can trust me when I say to all of you, you can trust me when I say to all of you and give you my promise. At the last day, your bodies will be raised and reconstructed and attached to your spirits that are living in heaven with Christ by the power of his voice. Right? Now let me show you how powerful his voice is. John 10, 17, 18. So are you, didn't I tell you you're going to learn a lot about the Bible? 
And these sessions, not about Muhammad, it's about bringing it to Jesus, bringing Muhammad under the feet of Jesus. John 10, 17, 18. Let me show you something. He's going to do another miracle to prove this. John 10, 17, 18. 17, 18. Read this. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, by, but I lay it down of myself. See, no one can take my life. No one can take my soul. No one has the power to put me to death. I lay it down of myself, and I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. See what Jesus just said? No man can make me die. No one can take my soul. No one can kill me. No one can put me to death. I choose to die and lay my life down. Otherwise, no one could touch me, and I will then raise my life back. Right? Now, he gives proof of what he just said. John 18, verses 4 to 6. John 18, verses 4 to 6. Brian, don't focus too much on Muhammad. Focus on Jesus, please. John 18, verses 4 to 6. Watch here. Watch what happens here. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Who do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. These are the, the, the guards trying to come to arrest them. Watch. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. You understand what Jesus just did? He showed them by those two words in the Greek, ego I me, I can strike you dead. Because when he said, I am, they fell backwards from the impact. Boom! And he knocked them all back. Do you see the power of Jesus' voice? That's the voice of Jesus that spoke creation into being. That's the voice of Jesus that sustains all creation and gives you life. That's the voice of Jesus that brought Lazarus out of the grave and will bring the dead out of their graves and awakens us spiritually to live forever. That voice knocked them backwards. Did you see it? I am. And they fell back. What's his point? You could not get near me if I didn't allow you to get near me because I can wipe you out by the sound of my voice. You breathe because of my voice. You see the power of Jesus? Did you catch it? And to show that he's still in control, John 19, 30 to 34. Even on the cross, he chose when he would die. Did you know that? According to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus chose when he would die on the cross. It wasn't chosen for him. Thank you, brother. Did Mitch, Lord bless you. It was, he decided, now I die. Watch, John 19, 30, 34. Watch. Even on the cross, he was controlling his, his destiny. Even on the cross, he was controlling his fate and when he would die. Here, I'm not making it up. Read. John 19, 30 to 34. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. He surrendered his spirit and died to the shock of the Roman soldiers. Because notice, the Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, right? <clears throat> For that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Now watch. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with them, because the other two hadn't died. So they broke their legs so they would speed up their death. And I'll explain the significance of that in a minute. But now notice 33. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already. Oops, hold on. Dead already. Hold on, my, my phone. My, no, let me charge it. Dead already, folks. Watch. They did not break his legs. So are you seeing that he died and no one took his life on the cross? Did you catch it? He decided, now I die. You will decide when I die. I decide I'm leaving now. And he summoned his spirit to leave his body. Did you catch it? And then verse 34. Let's read 34 again. Did you catch it? They didn't take his life away from him. Verse 34. Okay. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now let me explain 
historically why they would break the legs of the victim. The positioning of the body on the cross was such that you had to push out to breathe because you'd suffocate. So you'd be hanging and you'd be to breathe. When they break your leg, you could no longer push up to breathe out, so you'd suffocate and die. You see how painful a death crucifixion was? They say crucifixion was one of the most horrendous ways to die. Even, have you ever heard of the expression excruciating pain? That's two Latin words. Ec, excruciating means from the cross. Man, I got an excruciating pain. Excruciating means from the cross. It's so painful, it's like I'm being nailed to the cross. So they broke the legs of their two so they would suffocate <laughs> and die. Right? Crux. That's a Latin word for crucifixion. Crux. Right? But Jesus was in control, even on the cross. He said, now I die. You don't cause me to die. You don't tell me when to die. I die now. Father, it's finished. Spirit, leave my body. Oh, you can't use that word, Renee, anymore? Why? Why can't you use it? You got it now? Ex crux, from the cross. Excruciating, two Latin words. From the cross. It's so painful, it's like I'm being nailed to the That's what it means. You guys didn't know that, right? It was the most horrendous and painful way to die, Brian. If you're a Roman citizen, they would spare you crucifixion. That's why Paul, who's a Roman citizen, got beheaded, whereas Peter, who wasn't, was crucified upside down. Amen, Renee. That's out of your love for Jesus. Okay? But are you seeing that Jesus is proving, I lay my life down. No one can take it away from me. I'm almighty. You can't touch me. I volunteer to die. I choose to die out of my love for you. By my voice, I can kill you dead, wipe you out of existence, or make you alive and sustain you. And here I'm going to show you. I'm going to raise Lazarus by my voice and knock the soldiers backwards off their feet by my voice. Who can touch me? You don't know who I am. I'm the almighty son of God, one with the Father and the Spirit. Is that clear now? Is it sinking in? Did you catch how much depth and meat there is in our Bible and how clear the teaching of Jesus is? He is God Almighty, but he's not the Father or the Spirit. Do you see now why we were Trinitarians and our Trinitarians in the church will always be Trinitarian? And you see how what Muhammad said proves that Jesus is God? A few more examples, and I'm going to do a series on this. Guys. I got series lined up until Jesus takes me home. If you're praying for me to be healthy, holy and pure and living for Jesus and not being a hypocrite and he saves me from my flesh and God bless my daughters and provide for the ministry financially during this hard time, I will be doing series until the Lord takes me home. Okay? So glory to God. I'm here to be used of Jesus, to serve you, to see all of you fall in love with Jesus. You know, my goal is when the Lord calls me home, my goal is to see Christians say, Jesus used Sam Shimon to make me fall in love and adore Jesus. And I'll say, Lord, my work is done. That's why we exist, to love you, to worship you, to glorify you, and bring others to love you because you're worthy and we cannot love you enough. That's my goal. That is my goal, honestly. My goal is to hear people say that Sam Shimon was use of the Spirit to make me fall in love with Jesus and never doubt how real Jesus is. And I'll say, Lord, <clears throat> your servant is ready to depart in peace. Take me home, Lord. Take me home. Now, with that said, okay, with that said, other examples where Muhammad said something about God that shows that Jesus is God. Are you ready? We're going to show you where Muhammad made claims about God that Jesus claimed for himself, proving that Jesus did claim to be God, whether Muslims like it or not. This one, everyone knows this. Everyone and his mother knows this one. It's very easy. But I'm going to go into other stuff that many of you may have not have heard. So I'm going to go into new stuff too. This one, many of you already knew. The John 5, 1, John 6, John 11. And this one, many of you know. Many of you know. Let's go to chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran. But I got a lot more lined up. 
I got a lot more lined up. So don't think I'm just going to repeat stuff you already know. Hopefully, by the grace of God, I'm going to mention stuff you haven't heard. Okay, 57 verse 3 of the Quran. 57 verse 3 of the Quran. Watch here. He is the first and the last. Everyone knows this. Al awwal wal akhir. Allah is the first and the last, and the outward and the inward, and He is knower of all things. Now, thou shalt not pontificate, Protestant believer, first and last. You guys know this like the back of your hand. You even recite this in your sleep. But for the benefit of others who don't know this, I'm going to repeat it again. And it also helps us to hear something over and over again until it becomes second nature for the glory of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Guys, notice Muhammad said two of the names of his God is first and the last. Two of the names of his God, Allah, who's a false God, but still first and the last. Right? Al-awwal wal-akhir. Al-awwal wal-akhir. First and the last. All right. Here's a trick I do on Muslims. Now they already know the trick, so it's no longer a trick. And it's an honest trick. It's not a deceitful trick like Allah and His Messenger do. Watch here. I have them read just Revelation 117. I set them up. I don't read verses 17 and 18. I just read Revelation 117. So let's look at Revelation 117. So we read this verse, and I say, hey, who is this? They'll say, it's Allah. And then you ask them, can a creature say he's the first and last? They'll say, that's blasphemy. No creature can say that he's the first and last. That's blasphemy. Only Allah, only God can be first and last. So Revelation 117, watch. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and last. So I pause there. I go, now we just read the Quran. Allah is the first and last. No creature can claim to be the first and last, right? They'll say yes. I go, so who's speaking? They'll say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azwajal. Allah azwajal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is speaking? Yes. So Allah just said, fear not, I'm the first last. Alhamdulillah. Then we read verse 18. Then we read verse 18. Watch here. Alhamdulillah. Then we read verse 18. I am he that liveth and I was dead. When did your God Allah die? I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen, and I have the keys of hell and of death. When did your God, Allah, die? Because you just said this is Allah. Allah speaking. Allah said, I was dead, but I live forevermore. So when did your God, Allah, die? Your Bible is corrupt. The brother made a good point. Uh, in Bukhari, Jolim 7, number 243, the brother, he didn't read. When Allah didn't read. Yeah, but he used it for a different reason, Thomas Yo. Josh McDowell did not use it to show Jesus' claim to be God. So, Thomas Yo, give the context because you're going to give the impression that Josh McDowell in their debate was using it to show that Jesus claimed to be God. That wasn't the context. The context is God set up Ahmadidah to make himself look like a stupid fool, a son of Satan. He said, Nowhere in the 27 books of the New Testament did Jesus said, I was dead and I live, uh, I'm alive again. And he goes, nowhere, and he quoted Revelation 1, 17, 18. So give the context, Thomas, yo, before I come up there and bust your, bust your face, yo. Yo. Certified donkey. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. All right. So is it clear that from the chronic perspective, Jesus is claiming to be God? Is it clear from the chronic perspective, Jesus is claiming to be God? Allah is the first and last. Jesus, I'm the first and last. I was dead and I live forever. Okay, all right, but now we're going to have some fun. Remember, I gave you this article. I'm going to give it to you again. I gave you this article. I'm going to give you the link again. And I have another article I'm about to finish for the series God Woman. Okay, here you go. You guys really want to get excited? Now let's get excited. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. Watch here. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. The threat, brother. Dutch bitch. The brother say, sister, I know, sister, nowhere did Jesus say he's God. I know, he say, <laughs> all right, anyway. chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 210. Let's read what the Quran says about Allah. Wait day for not else that then that Allah should come unto them in the shadows of the clouds with the angels. Then the case would be already judged. All cases go back to Allah for judgment. Did you catch what the Quran says? The Jews were telling Muhammad, right? Let Allah come to judge us. 
And so Muhammad says, so you're waiting for Allah to come in the shadows of the clouds with the angels? Did you catch it? Chapter 2, verse 210. Muhammad agrees with the Old Testament scriptures, the Hebrew Bible. God will come in the clouds of heaven with angels. Did you catch it? One more time, chapter 2, verse 210. Allah, God comes on the shadow of the clouds, riding the clouds with angels to judge mankind. Right? This is all my article. Now watch how we're going to tie, tie it with Jesus. Okay? Right there. Are they waiting for the judgment day? Are they waiting for Allah to come in the shadows of the clouds with the angels so he can settle the matter? So notice, Muhammad agreed with the Jews. God will come at the clouds with angels uh, to judge the earth. And this is confirmed in chapter 89, verses 21 and 23. Oh, uh, you got it, Phantom. You see where we're going with this. Chapter 89, verses 21 and 23. Chapter 89, verse 21, 23. Watch here. There's a lot more in my article, but again. Nay, but when the earth is ground to atoms, grinding, grinding, and thy Lord, thy Lord shall come with angels, rank on rank, and hell is brought near that day. On that day man will remember, but how will the remembrance then avail him? So Allah is the Lord of Muhammad who comes with the angels in the shadow of the clouds on the last day to judge mankind. Let's go and see what Jesus says about himself. Mark 14, 61 to 62. Mark 14, 61 to 62. What did Jesus say about himself? And I'm going to blow you away with the most shocking, shocking plagiarism of Muhammad. Shocking plagiarism of Muhammad. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Wait. Jesus, you're the one who's the Son of Man who rides the clouds of heaven? You're the one who's going to do that? Yes. And are you coming alone, Jesus? Let's go to Matthew 16, 28. Matthew 16, 28. Are you coming alone, Jesus? Oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 16, 27. My, my belt. Matthew 16, 27. Uh, 28 is because Jesus coming in the kingdom. Matthew 16, 27. My, sorry, I'm Protestant. Your uh, Alzheimer's virus is affecting me. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. So notice, the Son of Man is the Son of God. The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. God is his Father. So is the Son of Man, the Son of God, with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Wait, 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 wait. Jesus, you're the Son of Man, who's the Son of God, who'll come in the glory of your Father with the angels to judge? You're the one who's doing that? Yes, I'm the one doing that. You're the Son of Man who rides the clouds of heaven? Yes. You're the Son of Man who will manifest the glory of your Father with the angels to judge mankind? Yes. But Jesus, the Quran says, Allah does that. Muhammad's Lord does that. You got you caught it? So why is Jesus claiming to do the things that even Muhammad said Allah does, God does, and only God does? And you're telling me Jesus did not claim to be God in the Gospels. He didn't claim to be God in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But according to the Quran, what Jesus says, only God says and does, because Muhammad said these are the things that only God does, God says. So is Muhammad wrong? Let's go to Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Okay. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Now, this is a long one, so I can't quote all of it, but I want to show you something. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear, pay attention now, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Notice it's his angels. I, the Son of Man, own the angels. They're my angels. With a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather to, together his elect, the Son of Man's elect, 
from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. So wait, Jesus is the Son of Man who comes in the clouds of heaven. The angels belong to him. They are his angels. He commands them. And they will come with a sound of a great trumpet. And Jesus will gather his elect to himself. And Jesus comes to reward people according to what they have done. And you're telling me Jesus did not claim to be God in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's what you want to convince me? Now, this is a long one. It's in my paper. It's a long one to my paper. It's chapter 39, verses 68 to 75. Chapter 39, verses 68 to 70, uh, 75. And chapter 69, verses 13, 18. Chapter 69 of the Quran, verses 13, 18. Write down chapter... Well, you don't need to write down. It's in the paper. Chapter 39, verses 68 to 75. And chapter 68, verses 13, 18. Because I want you to see this here. Watch here. Watch here. Because remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, I'm coming... As a son of man with the clouds and great power and glory, I will send forth my angels to gather my elect at the sound of the great trumpet. Watch here. Watch here. Well, let me post it again. This is That's the Quran. Chapter 39, verses 68 to 75. But I'm not going to quote all of it. I'm just going to quote the relevant part. For the trumpet shall be blown, and whosoever is in the heavens and whosoever is in the earth shall swoon, save whom God wills. Then it shall be blown again, and lo, shall stand beholding. Right? Okay, you see that? And the earth shall shine with the light of its Lord. Wait, wait, and the book shall be set in place. Hold on. Allah is going to come and illuminate the earth with his light. At the sound of the trumpet, and he comes in the shadows of the clouds with the angels to judge the earth. But Jesus said, that's what's going to happen at my coming. That's, how, that's what Jesus says is going to happen at my coming. When I come with my angels on the clouds of heaven as the Son of Man in the glory of my Father, at the sound of a great trumpet... I will judge the earth, repay mankind for what they've done, and gather my people to myself. And you still want to convince me? You still want to convince me? Jesus never said he's God. Exactly, Pedro Jr. Muhammad robbed God's word more than he robbed caravans because he took the words of Jesus and put it in the mouth of his God and used it to describe his God. But you see how Jesus now is going to expose Muhammad, Pedro? Again, Satan is inspiring Muhammad to take these things and corrupt them, right? And God then takes what Satan corrupted and brings it back to Jesus. Good, Muhammad, you apply that to your God because now you put a weapon in my hand to show Jesus' claim to be God, exposing you as an antichrist and your God as Satan. Thank you. See what we did? You see how amazing the Lord is? But I'm now going to blow you with the most amazing part of all. Now, this one I'm going to have to give you. It's a long one, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Now, guys, I'll read it. I'll read it. Matthew, just write down Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. Because here's where you're going to get blown away. You guys want to get blown away? Do you really, really want to be like, wow? All my paper. Now, do me a favor, guys. Text me. If I start buffering, so far, glory to God, the buffering is good. Meaning there's no buffering. But text me if I start buffering. Okay, watch. Are you ready? It's a long one. It's a long one. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. As he's posting it, I'll read from here. Okay. Pay attention, though. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. So, again, Jesus is coming with all his angels. In glory and will sit on his glorious throne. Jesus, the Son of Man, will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So the Son of Man, Jesus, will then bring the nations, separate them. Sheep's on the right, sheep on the right, goats on the left. Okay, watch. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right. So notice the son of man is the king who sits on his glorious throne. And that's Jesus. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father. See right there. If anyone wants to say Jesus is not the son of man, you sure? Jesus is not the son of man? 
He just said, come you blessed by my father. That's Matthew 25, 41, right? I'm sorry. Matthew 25, 34. Matthew 25, 34, Jesus says, the son of man is the son of God. God is the father, the son of man, showing that it's him. I'm the son of man. God is my father. I come on the clouds with my angels sit on my glorious throne. All the nations will stand before me. The righteous, I will put on my right. They're my sheep. The goats who are evil, I'll put on my left. Everyone getting that, right? Before I move on to the next point. Because this is where you're going to go, wow, I can't believe what Muhammad did. You're going to say, I can't believe what Muhammad did. You think this blew you away? Wait. Okay, watch. Let's read. Then the king will say, so Jesus is the king, to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, so notice, the Son of Man is the Son of God, who is the King, who is Lord. Lord, so Jesus claimed to be the Son of Man, claims to be the King, claims to be the Lord of all creation, and claims to be the Son of God. All in this one chapter. And Jesus never claimed to be God. No, no. When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirst and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these of my brothers, you did it to me. So far are you with me? You understand what Jesus said, right? Because this is the second section that's going to blow you away. Because what Muhammad did with the second part starts at 41 of 46. Okay, now let's read 41 of 46. Okay. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, meaning the least of my brethren, the most needy of my brothers who worship me, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, in case you doubt that Jesus was talking about himself, that Jesus is saying he's the son of man, he is the Lord, he is the king, and God is his father. Let's read on Matthew 26, verses 1 and 2, because there were no chapter divisions in the original Greek manuscripts. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the son of man will be de delivered up to be crucified. The Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Is there any doubt he's the Son of Man? Is there any doubt that he's the Son of Man? Who's the Son of Man? The one who will be crucified. That's the same Son of Man who comes in the clouds with great power and glory, with his angels, and sits on a glorious throne. You with me there? Okay. Did you see the second part? What was the second part? I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me to drink. What do you mean, Lord? When one of my followers, my brothers who believe in me, who trusted in me, their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when they were in need, and the most needy of them, and you ignored them, you ignored me, right? You caught that, right? Who didn't catch it? Because now you're going to get really, not only will you be blown away, you're going to get upset. But you're going to be upset enough to use it to expose Muhammad and glorify Jesus. This is all in my article, but I'm going to give you the link. Here's the link where you can read it. Guys, please click on this link. It's in my article, but I want you to click on this link. Get ready to see what Muhammad did with the words of Jesus. Putting a weapon in our hand to expose Muhammad and Allah for the glory of Jesus. I'm going to read it. Tell me if it sounds familiar. I'm going to read it. Tell me if it sounds familiar. On the authority of Abu Huraira, who said that the messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad, said, Allah, mighty and sublime be he, will say on the day of resurrection, O son of Adam, I fell ill and you visited me not. 
He will say, O oh Lord, and how should I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so had fallen ill and you visited him not? Did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found me with him? O oh, son of Adam, I asked you for food and you fed me not. He will say, O oh Lord, and how should I feed you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so asked you for food and you fed him not? Did you not know that had you fed him, you would surely have found that the reward for doing so is with me? Now, that's not in the Arabic. You have found that with me? O son of Adam, I asked you to give me to drink and you gave me not to drink. He will say, O Lord, how should I give you to drink when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, my servant so-and-so asked you to, to give him to drink and you gave him not to drink. Had you given him to drink, you would have surely found that with me. It was rated by Muslim. Wow. Wow. You see what Muhammad did? He took Jesus' words in Matthew 25, 41, 46, and he put it in the words of Allah. He had Allah say the words of Jesus Christ, our God, proving that Jesus claimed to be God Almighty in the flesh. Yes, he plagiarized by Satan, but rejoice in our Lord Jesus that he raised up soldiers for his glory, raised up people like David and I to now show you what Muhammad did and then use it to expose Muhammad as a son of Satan, Allah as Satan, and bring it back to Jesus to say, now Muslims, you're stuck. Muslims, you're stuck. Because Muhammad admitted that what Jesus said can only be said by God. Only God Almighty can say those words. You can't say he's just a creature or a prophet because that means that Muhammad lied when he said these are the words of Allah. You're stuck because of the Satan that inspired Muhammad. He puts you in a position where you got to admit, yeah, Jesus claimed to be God, but your Bible's corrupt. Exactly, Riaz. Who's not shocked by this? Who didn't get blown away by Muhammad stealing Jesus' words, putting it in the mouth of Allah, but how Jesus now redeems it and brings it back to him to prove he claimed to be God. The Quran does, Anna. It's in Surah Al-Tawbah where it says he's an ear. I'll give you that later. Is it amazing? Okay, but now, now that I give you at least enough proof in this session, enough proof in this session that Jesus... According to Muhammad, claimed to be God Almighty. According to Muhammad himself, what Jesus said and did, only God can do, showing that the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus in those Gospels claims to be God Almighty in the flesh, one with the Father and the Spirit. Did you get that? Is that clear? Because I want to now just focus on what Jesus said in Matthew 25, 31 to 34. Okay, now... If that's clear, let's go back and understand what we just read. Let's put Muhammad aside. Let's understand Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Let's understand what our Lord was saying. The Lord was saying, if you are my followers, and if you love me, and I'm truly your Lord, show it by your acts of love. In other words, if you truly believe I'm Lord, feed the poor among you. Visit the sick among you, right? <clears throat> Invite strangers who don't have a place to live and provide shelter for them. Go and see the sick in the hospital for my sake. So if you love me, prove your love for me by your deeds of love towards your brothers and sisters in Christ, even unbelievers. Show love to those whom I love. So if you have an elderly neighbor who's panicking right now because of coronavirus, be Jesus to him or her. If you have someone sick in the hospital, be Jesus to him or her and go and spend time with them and love them. If you know there's a family that doesn't have enough to eat, buy them groceries, not one time, regularly, and say, I do it because Jesus loves you. That's what Jesus said. Because Jesus says that on the day of judgment, I will show you whether you truly love me or not by how you treated and loved one another. So if you claim to me, you claim that I'm your Lord 
and you had someone hungry and you didn't feed them. Someone thirsty, you didn't give them to drink. Someone sick in the hospital, you didn't visit them. Someone who needed shelter and you ignored them. Then you failed me and you demonstrate you didn't truly love me. You see how amazing Jesus is? Jesus says, you love me, you're going to love people. You see why he's beautiful? It's not just about him loving me. If you love me, then I'm going to impose on you to love one another by your deeds. What a beautiful Savior that he puts it on me to make sure I care for someone and not leave someone in need. That's why you have hospitals started by Christians, orphanages started by Christians, <clears throat> women's shelters started by Christians. Christians did this because they believe in Jesus and they wanted to show Jesus, Lord, I do love you. And because of you, I, I built a hospital in your honor for your glory to take care of the sick. Lord, I do love you. That's why I built a homeless shelter or a shelter for battered women to be your hands and feet and to love them by my deeds because I love you. Right? So, folks, let us love Jesus because we don't love him enough. And let us love him by our actions. Care for people. Pedro, it's never too late. It's never too late. As long as there's breath in your body, as long as your heart is tender and broken, Jesus loves you and adores you, now do something about it in the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to, saints. It's not a choice. Jesus gave us these commands for us to do it. Let's do these commands. Let us help people and feed them if we can. Buy them groceries every week. Instead of buying something you don't need, cut off your cigarettes. If you're spending $40 a week on cigarettes, stop cigarettes and use those $40 to help that family with groceries every week until they get on their feet. Not one time. Jesus is not saying you do it one time. You do it repetitively. You keep doing it until I call you home. You get my point? Care for them. And I pray in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit will convict me and give me the power to practice what I preach, to practice and save me from fear of money. Please, Lord. Please, let me be a doer of you. You're not a hypocrite, Lord. Now, let me leave you with this. And Lord willing, we'll be on tomorrow. Thank you, guys. God is answering my prayers because now we have more. We got about 180 today. That's blessing my heart because we're getting more and more people because I want more and more people to come so I can use my gift to serve you and love you and teach you with the gift the Lord has given me. But Louisa, I want every one of you, Louisa and every one of you, when we finish this session, get on your knees alone, open Matthew 25, read 31 to 46 on your own with no one there, read it aloud and say, Holy Spirit, I beg you, I need your power, your strength, your grace to do this to show I love Jesus. And help me to do it repetitively, not one time and slack. Please, because I love Jesus and I want to show him, Lord, I do love you. Commit to doing that. And pray for one another we do it. But now let me leave you with this. And Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow. God willing. As long as God gives me health, makes me holy and pure, and gives me the grace not to be a hypocrite but a doer of his word, I will be here teaching you until the Lord calls me home. And guys, please pray for my daughters. I'm not there for them. They need their Baba. Ask Jesus to provide overabundantly for them because their mother is out of work until April 30th at the earliest. The reason why? She does hair. Those who are in the hair salon, forget about it. They're going to be out of work for a long time because they can't touch anybody. Pray Jesus in his love will make my daughters feel rich and that he'll provide overabundantly for them and me for his glory and for their sake. Now, let me read this part. Matthew 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. We're almost done, Pedro. Just wait for the last part. I don't want you to, I don't want you to go. I need you to hear this. You want to see the heart of God? Let me tell you the beauty of the heart of Jesus. Guys, here's where I need you to pay attention before we end it. Pay attention, please. Watch this. Then shall he, Jesus say, also to them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. See, right there you see Jesus' heart. Jesus just said, I didn't prepare hell, everlasting fire, for you, for human beings. 
I prepared it for the devil and his angels. But when you leave me no choice and you decide to follow Satan, then you're going to be where your master is. If you follow Satan, whether you know it or not, by doing what Satan wants you to do instead of me, where your master is, there you shall be. When I created hell, I created it for him and his angels, not for you. I created heaven for you. But when you ignore me, when you don't love me, when you don't honor me, and do what you want, when you want, then you're following Satan. Because you know what Satanism is? Folks, let me tell you what Satanism is not. Let me tell you what Satanism is not. Are you ready? People think Satanism is the worship of Satan. No, that's not Satanism. Satanism is worshiping yourself and making yourself your own God. Let me repeat. Satanism is worshiping yourself and making your own, your own self your own God, doing what you want for your pleasure at the expense of others. You know how I know that? What was Satan's lie in the garden? What was Satan's lie in the garden? He didn't say, worship me. He said, no, be your own gods, doing your own thing, and don't care what God wants you to do. That's Satanism. Let me repeat it again. Don't take my word for it. Go read Genesis 3. The serpent didn't say, the serpent didn't say, worship me. He said, no, be your own gods, doing your own thing, worshiping your own desires at the expense of doing God's will. Satanism is the love of self and saying to God, not your, your will, but my will be done. God, you don't want me to have sex before marriage? You know what? I'm going to have sex before marriage because I don't care about you. It's my desire, my pleasure, and I want to satisfy it. God, you don't want me to hoard stuff, hoard money at the expense of other suffering? Who cares what you got to say? I'm going to hoard it because it's about me, me, myself, and I. That's Satanism. God, you're telling me that unborn child is a human life, a life you gave, and it's not my body. It's your body. This body is yours. And I'm to use my body to honor you? No, it's my body, and I don't want that life in me. You don't tell me what to do. That's Satanism. That's Satanism. You understand? Not th thy will, mine be done. Not thy will, thine will, mine be done. That's Satanism. Everyone clear? So if you forget anything, don't forget. Read Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Read it and pray it out loud and ask the Spirit, give me the grace to do this. There are elder Here, I'll give you an example. Let me leave you this. I went to Walmart. I went to Walmart. Guys, true story. I'm not trying to toot my horn. Lord, crucify my flesh. I'm a hypocrite, but I trust Jesus to save me from my hypocrisy and by the power of the Spirit, make me a doer of his word. Pray for me. I went to Walmart just a couple hours ago. They had just opened up a box of, what's it, those wipes? What kind of wipes are they? I just bought them, man. Wow. Lysol wipes, is that what it is? Where you wipe? Is that what they call it, Lysol wipes? Okay. Now, watch here. I go there. There's a line, a line of people hungry, waiting, waiting to hoard. They didn't even wait for them to open the package. And I could see the frustration of one of the workers. He's looking at it. And as they ran to get it off the shelf, he goes, one person, one, one for person, please. Only one. He was angry. And I started laughing. And I said, man, this is ridiculous, isn't it? It's an embarrassment, isn't it? It was, yeah, Lysol Clark swipes. Yeah? And he looked at me. He goes, it is. And you know what I said? I said, do you mind me, get, you mind, mind me taking one? He goes, here you go. You know what I said, Tim? I said, may God bless you. You know what he said to me? He goes, thank you so much. I needed to hear that. Just those words, God bless you. Because why? He was frustrated and he was sick at what he was seeing. Selfishness. Everyone for themselves. Everyone for themselves. Hard, 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 hard. And to even disgusting, a lady took two. He said, take one. And the lady had two in her hands. And I was on the phone with my friend. I go, can you believe this? And she's listening to me. I go, here's a lady that takes two. When the guy just told her, take one, because she has no shame. I said it out loud. And I, you know, I just said, God bless you. It meant the world to him. And I didn't think much of it, because I say, God bless you all the time. 
I said, God bless you. He goes, thank you. I needed to hear that. Because they're stressed. They're overworked. They're panicking because they're the ones touching people in contact with people. So you're thinking about yourself not catching it, but you're forgetting. What about the employees at Walmart or Walgreens or the hospitals? They are exposing themselves daily to the danger of coronavirus. Are you being Jesus to them and appreciating them? It only took two words to make that man's day. God, oh, Three, actually. I'm sorry. So I'm bad at math. God bless you. So Matthew 25, 31 to 46, our responsibility, guys, our responsibility. We are the hands and feet of Jesus, loving people by our actions like Jesus did. Jesus, by his actions, loved us. He proved it by his actions, not just his words. So let me leave you with this. And Lord willing, tomorrow, I'll be back, God willing, around 4 p.m., four, between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 5 p.m. New York Time. Little Today, I was a little later than normal. But let me leave you with this. 1 John 3, 16 to 18. 1 John 3, 16 to 18. And I love you guys for the sake of Jesus. I don't love you enough. I pray I love you more for the sake of Jesus. For the sake of Jesus. For the sake of the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. 1 John 3, chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Guys, please, everyone, take a moment to read. Everyone, take a moment to read this. Hereby perceive we, hereby we see, we comprehend the love of God because he laid down his life for us. You see, God showed his love by his actions. And the greatest action of God that he loved us, God became flesh and died. You, no greater act than when someone dies voluntarily for you. Now notice. Hereby we perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Follow Zach's example. Be willing to die for each other if necessary. It's not about you. It's about him for the sake of Jesus. But now 1718. May the Holy Spirit etch this in your hearts and your minds. And give you the power to live it out. Right? 1718. But whosoever, whoever has this world's good. Whoever is rich financially and has money in the bank. And seeth his brother have need, and you see someone in need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, and doesn't show him compassion, how dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Did you catch what he said? How dare you, Christian? You got 100000 in the bank, 50000 in the bank, 30000 in the bank, and you're well off. And you claim to be a Christian, but you got a brother or a sister barely making rent and can't have food, and you do nothing to help him? Nothing? And you think you love God and God's love is in you? And no notice what he said? My children, let us not love in word and tongue only, but in deed and in truth. Show your love by making sure you take care of the needs of others. Folks, if we all did this, if we all did this, <clears throat> the world would be a better place. We wouldn't have hungry people, starving people, homeless people. If we actually put into practice Jesus' teachings, there would be a taste of heaven on earth. If we truly did this, no homelessness, no hunger, no starvation. If we truly did what Jesus said, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be that people. You, all of us, we will do it. Holy Spirit, give us power. We will do it by your power. We'll be more than hearers. We'll be doers, putting your words in practice. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is God Almighty, the Almighty Son of the Father, one with the Spirit, three persons, one God. Jesus is the God-man, God in the flesh, and he will come physically and bodily. He is alive, and we will live and never die. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, sooner than later. Mar Maranatha, watch over us, Lord Jesus. My children, Lord Jesus, love them and bless them as only you can. Provide for them, bring them to me, and bless everyone. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Lamb of God. We love you, Heart of the Father. We love you, Virgin-born Son of Mary, Son of David. Have mercy on us. We love you, Kingdom Kings and Lord of Lords, are all in all. You are risen, risen indeed. Kirileisun, kirileisun, kirileisun. Christos Anesti. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Lord willing.